Hey, I'm David Freiberger from Hot Rod Magazine. Today, I'm gonna to tell you all about the new Fast Easy EFI 2.0. It is the self-learning, easy to install version of fuel injection that bolts up just like a carburetor and has minimal wiring to it. This new version 2.0 has features that were not previously available on the 1.0. It can handle more horsepower. This thing has eight injectors in it instead of four, and it'll also flow about 1,050 CFM. It will run gas or E85. It can control timing, and it has a nitrous feature where it will trigger a timing retard and also a little bit of fuel control for nitrous oxide. You do it all through a little touch screen, which means you don't have to use a computer at all. We're gonna install the Easy EFI on my own 70 Dodge Super B that I've had forever. The engine here is a 484 cubic inch Hemi. It's got a big solid roller cam in it, 10 to one compression, makes in the neighborhood of 600 horsepower. So it's perfect for this application. It's right where you might say that you want the Easy EFI 1.0, but you'd be safer to have the flow capabilities of the 2.0. Also, I really want to use the ignition timing control feature because I do run nitrous oxide on this car and I want the 2.0's feature where it will retard timing and do a little bit of fuel control for the nitrous oxide. One thing that's also going to make this swap pretty easy is that I already have a killer fuel system in the car and I'm going to be able to use this carbureted pump and jack up the pressure in order to run the EFI on it. Mechanically, probably the very first thing you should do if you can't weld yourself is run down to the muffler shop and get the O2 sensor bung welded into your exhaust system. The Easy EFI does use a wideband O2 sensor. It does have a feedback loop in it to adjust air fuel ratio. And that is gonna stop you right there if you start messing around with your wiring or your throttle body before you get that welded into the exhaust. The first part of the installation is as simple as bolting on a carburetor. The throttle body is set up just like a typical 4150 carb and it's got that flange on it too. I have a dominator on the Super B right now so I've added this adapter which goes from the dominator flange on the intake to the 4150 flange on the throttle body. The linkage here is also just like a typical 4150 so that will make it easy to hook up your throttle cable or mechanical linkage or trans kick down or whatever you may have. So I'm installing the throttle body. You can see I've got a nitrous plate on here and I'm gonna go ahead and put it underneath the adapter. One thing about running the nitrous with the EZ EFI is that it will trigger a timing retard but it does not supply all of the fuel enrichment for the nitrous system. What you do is you go into the handheld and you can pick the air fuel ratio that you want it to run at while it's on the nitrous. And most of that will come from the nitrous plate. And then this can make sort of discrete tuning adjustments to help you get to that target. That part was pretty easy. I'm still gonna have to rig a dual throttle return spring set up over here somewhere, but we can get to that later. I'm gonna move on now to the fuel system part of the installation. Now, the EZFI can be fueled two different ways. You can either have it return style or returnless, but this car already has a really beefy return style fuel system on it, which is really the recommended way to go. It keeps the fuel cooler, it's just, it's a better program, but I have to take off my carbureted regulator and convert this all to EFI style stuff because the fuel system for the fast easy EFI runs at 43 psi instead of about six for a carburetor. These are the inlets here for the throttle bodies fueling. You can run in one side and out the other and then back to a return style regulator or you can run fuel into both of them and then return earlier in the system. There's three fuel pump setups that you can do with the Easy EFI. The one that is most recommended is the in-tank pump. That thing will run cool because it's in the tank. It's all sealed up and safe in there. It comes with all of the fittings to go through your tank to get it in there. It also comes with push lock connectors, special rubber hose that's meant for submersion in the gas tank, and a whole bunch of rubber plumbing. So that's the easy way to do it. And that thing, they say, will support 1,200 horsepower. Now they also make one that is similar to this that runs in line if you don't want to get into your tank. And again, that's the most recommended way to do it. My car, however, has this rocket science fuel system on it, which uses a pump very similar to this one, which will support all kinds of power. It's a full race pump, has to be used with a return style system. And with this one, you're kind of on your own to come up with all the extra fittings and hoses that are required. Again, on this car, I'm using the return type fuel system, which uses a regulator that looks like this. It has two ports on the side and the fuel returned to the tank on the bottom. 
One of the things you really can't forget in the fuel system is that you need to put in this little junction block that carries the fuel pressure sensor right here. And that obviously has to go on the pressure side of the system, not the return. We're gonna go ahead and put our pressure in there. And then the fuel return is gonna go on this side. We've got our fuel system all plumbed up now. And the last step there is gonna to be to put a boost reference between the throttle body and the regulator. What that does is when the engine's idling and let's say it's pulling like 10 inches of vacuum, it'll actually pull 10 pounds of fuel pressure off the regulator just because it doesn't really need it at idle. The last part of the mechanical installation is optional. It's gonna be swapping out the distributor for the fast dual sync distributor. The reason to do that is if you want the easy EFI to be able to control your timing, which I do. You don't have to do this. You can trigger the thing with a conventional ignition system and whatever distributor that you've got. But by putting this in, not only do we have the right type of pickup signal for the easy EFI, but it's already got a locked out advance curve, which is required so that the computer can be adjusting the timing instead of any springs or vacuum advance in the distributor itself. But before we've pulled this distributor out, we have the engine set up on the number one cylinder, meaning the compression stroke on number one, and it's 30 degrees before top dead center so that I can drop this new distributor in exactly the same way. This is designed to be phased properly at 30 degrees before top dead center, and that's where we have it right now. The rotor is pointing directly to the terminal here that I'm gonna use for the number one spark plug wire at 30 degrees before top dead center. And now, the moment you've all been waiting for, the electrical part of the program. Now, this is not really as daunting as it may look because in the instruction sheet, everything here is clearly labeled. It has a name in the instructions that exactly matches the tag on each wire. It shows you what each connection looks like and it describes the exact function of it. So this is really a plug and play deal. There's a number of things here like uh, crank trigger if you're gonna use it, oxygen sensor, water temperature, things like that. Very easy to plug that in. These extra wires are for added functionality that you might choose. The Easy EFI can turn on one or two electric fans. It can do an air conditioning idle up solenoid. And there's a wire here that senses if your nitrous is activated so that you can go into the timing retard for that. Then there's a black and red that goes directly to the battery. And finally, a plug with an extension that adds the handheld device so that you can control the whole thing. The first thing we do with the wiring harness is tie up everything that we're not going to use. Like for example, the electric fans. This car doesn't have that or air conditioning. It might have the fans in the future, so I don't want to snip the wires out. And then it narrows it down to just the stuff that we're actually going to use. Like for example, nitrous input. This goes to the handheld fuel pump relay. This just goes directly to the throttle body. You've got main power, oxygen sensor. This is the trigger for the ignition. This is ignition on off, fuel pressure, and finally, right into the distributor. So not as much stuff as you might think. I did want to talk a minute about the can link plug. What this is set up for is to work in conjunction with the Easy LS, which is a simple LS engine fuel injection setup that's coming up. It'll also work with the Easy TCU, which is a transmission controller. So those are just a convenience for if you're using some of those products, which we are not. One of the things that makes the setup simpler for wiring is that a whole bunch of the sensors that are required for fuel injection are built into the throttle body. Like for example, here's the inlet air temp sensor. This is the throttle position sensor. You can see there's the idle air control motor there and the map sensor is up here. The other features that you'll find on the throttle body are a couple of 3 8 vacuum ports here so that if you've got power brakes or anything like that, you do have ports for that and they need to be plugged if you're not using them. The other thing in the throttle body is this plug, which is backed up with a little piston and spring, and it is a damper for the fuel pressure so that it doesn't fluctuate as the injectors open and close. That and all eight injectors just plug in with this one harness, and then there's a uh, coolant temp that also comes out of the throttle body, which just goes into a sensor in your water jacket. Now we're down to the easiest part of the installation. We've gotten all the wiring done, and so we're gonna set up our initial parameters on the handheld touch screen. This is just really easy stuff that it asks you for, like the displacement of your engine, what idle speed you want, some basic timing information about where it is at idle and where you want it to be at peak, and then you fire the thing up and you go drive it. Going through the setup wizard just tells the computer some information that you know, and then there's also some calibrations that you go through. This is really easy, like engine cubic inches it wants to know. 
This isn't a small block Chevy. This is a 484 cubic inch Hemi. Idle RPM. I want to do 900 on this deal. And then you can also set a rev limiter, let's say 7,500. And it's as simple as that. Now it knows. It asks you some more simple questions like whether you're in a gas or E85, your fuel delivery system, how you're adjusting your timing. We've got the fast distributor, so we are adjusting timing with the Easy EFI. And so you can set your base timing curve here simply by moving these numbers up and down. You can change your RPM here. This system will also run like an Inglis 8-stack, dual throttle bodies, multi-port, but in our case, it's a single. Then there's the TPS calibration. First, you're going to do this with the throttle closed. I'm going to hit calibrate, and it's going to know that that's the voltage with the throttle closed. Then we're going to go ahead and open the throttle and calibrate it at wide open. And it's done. Our next screen is where you would go through and set your fuel pressure. Yeah, this screen right here, I'm not actually going to fire it up, but it tells you that your target fuel pressure is 43 PSI. Currently, it's zero. So this is where you can go through, fire up your fuel pump with that button. You can hear it running, and there's our current fuel pressure is 43 because I've got it preset. So that's also very simple. Our engine's already warmed up, so we will confirm that. Here's a cool feature. Once you've got the engine running, you can go in and confirm with a timing light that the computer and the actual balancer are agreeing on what the timing is. And if it's not, you can just make subtle adjustments here and the computer will compensate rather than you having to mess around with the distributor at all. Then you go in and do your idle air control calibration. That is as simple as turning a screw just like you would on a carburetor to set your air fuel ratio. After you go through the idle air control adjustment, you need to recalibrate your throttle position sensor because you've mechanically moved the throttle blade. And then you're done. Congratulations, Wizard has completed configuring the ECU. We're gonna fire it up for the first time before the Easy EFI really learns anything. Very cool.